We identified different types of bias and random error encountering clinical research. Now let's differentiate between intention to treat and per protocol analysis. When clinical trials report dropouts, they are typically due to two reasons, either non-adherence, for example, the patient is no longer taking the intervention or loss to follow up. For example, either moved, the patient moved away or something happened to the patient so we couldn't follow up with them. The intention to treat principle essentially says that in the final analysis of the study, you have to count every patient who was randomized regardless of whether they received the intended intervention. Many experts argue that a more suitable term for intention to treat is as randomized. The per protocol principle, on the other hand, states that the patients have to follow the protocol in order to be counted in the final analysis of the study. Any violation of the protocol will exclude the patient from the final results of the study. Now, from intuition, you might think that per protocol is the way to go because if you want to know if a drug really works or not, you want them to follow the protocol. But this is dangerous. Removing patients after randomization can increase the risk of selection bias, which is what randomization is actually intended to prevent. In general, it is best to have intention to treat analysis. It is more representative of the real world. For example, patients are likely to miss doses here and there. So if we show benefit from intention to treat analysis, we will be more confident that the result will also be true in the real world where patients are likely to violate protocol. Now, there are situations where per protocol is preferred. For example, if you are trying to evaluate toxicity to show the adverse effects of a drug, if somebody didn't take their drug and the rate of adverse effects were low, that's not good. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say we conduct a study and we enroll patients with cerebrovascular disease. So these are patients who are at risk of having a stroke. Now we randomize patients to two groups. One group will be the control group. We're going to give these patients in this group aspirin to see how effective aspirin is to prevent stroke. And in the intervention group, we will give aspirin, but we will also do surgery on these patients to prevent stroke. So as the study continues, we will measure how many patients will have stroke. So let's say that in each group, 10 patients will have early stroke and 10 patients will have late stroke, so later in the study. In both groups, we will have the same amount of strokes. And in each group, we have about 100 patients. Now, after randomization in the group that received surgery, it takes some time to prepare the patients for surgery. So the surgery is not done exactly at the beginning, so it takes some time to do the surgery. So, so, so these patients who had early stroke, they actually had not received the surgery. Now, by the end of this study, you can see that in the intervention group, 20 out of 100 had stroke, so 20% of them. And in the control group, also 20 out of 100 had stroke, so 20%. If you calculate the relative risk, 0.2 divided by 0.2 is 1. And relative risk reduction is 1 minus 1 equals 0. So essentially, there is no difference between the control group and the in, uh, intervention group. And this is the intention to treat analysis because we included all patients who were randomized. Now, let's say we also want to do per protocol analysis. The protocol says that the patients had to receive surgery in order to be included in the study. Now, you can see that 10 of these patients in the surgical uh, arm actually had stroke before they had surgery. So after they had stroke, they were no longer a candidate for surgery. So if you do the per protocol analysis, you can say that, um, you know, if you exclude these 10 patients because they didn't receive surgery, you only have 90 patients in the study now. And of these 90, 10 of them had stroke. So the stroke rate in the uh, intervention group was actually 11%. And of course, nothing changed in the, in, uh, in the control group because uh, everybody received aspirin, so it's still 20%. Now, if you do the relative risk, so 0.11 divided by 0.2 is uh, 0.55. And relative risk reduction is 1 minus 0.55, which is 0.45. Now, you can see that this shows a huge benefit of uh, surgical intervention if you do the per protocol analysis compared to no difference when you do intention to treat which is a huge uh, deviation from the truth, which is essentially no difference between these two groups.
So this is why it's important to uh, consider intention to treat in randomized clinical trials.